How many times in a D&D campaign have you went to the store and the only things that you could think to buy were maybe a sword or some rope? Kind of lame. But it doesn't have to be like that. D&D has a lot of really awesome items and you just have to find them. And we found them. I'm Cole from Rolling Deep and we're gonna show you some awesome items to use in your D&D campaign. To start this list off, we're going to talk about the Staff of Python. First introduced me through one of our DM, Tony Thompson's campaign. This staff is a slippery handful. From a first glance, it looks like a staff that has a snake design on it. Pretty cool, but the staff is way more than that. This staff can become a giant constrictor snake. And if you don't already know, this snake has some pretty awesome stats. With the strength of 19, 12 AC, and 60 hit points, you're going to want this snake in your boot, or at least on your side. So to summon the snake, all you have to do is use an action to say the staff's command word and throw the staff about 10 feet in front of you. Easy peasy, am I right? On your turn, you can command the snake to do whatever you want, as long as you aren't knocked out. You can even telepathically talk to your snake, which is perfect for some sneaky snake scenarios for you. Commanding the snake only uses a bonus action, so you get to fight alongside your pet. You can give it commands just like attack an enemy or have a guard location that's as far as 60 feet away, which is some pretty damn good reception. If the fight is over or your snake is running low on HP, no worries, you can just command the snake to go back into the staff form. The snake will revert back into the staff in the location of wherever the snake just was. Turning back into the staff, the snake regains all of its hit points for next time you use it. However, there is one issue with this item. If your snake gets to zero HP, it dies and returns back to the staff. And it shatters. This makes it no longer able to be used. So if you're in a fight, make sure to watch its HP so you don't lose your weapon. This is a perfect weapon for your druid or anyone who wants to beat someone with a stick. This is a super fun tool and you should definitely try this out for your next campaign. Next up comes from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. This is the Atlas of Endless Horizons, or as I like to call it, Zippy Deepy. Get the fuck out of here instruction manual. The in-text description is as followed. A wondrous item, rare, requires attunement by a wizard. This thick boot is bound in dark leather, crisscrossed with inlaid silver lines, suggesting a map or chart. When found, the book contains the following spells, which are wizard spells for you while you are attuned to the book. Arcane gate, dimension door, gate, misty step, plane shift, teleportation circle, and word of recall. It functions as a spell book for you. While you're holding the book, you can use it as a spell casting focus for your wizard spells. This book has three charges and it regains 1d3 expended charges daily at dawn with more little caveats if you're a caster find your squishy players need to retreat grab a copy of this bad boy and don't get it from the big companies in your DD campaign get it from the local places or the barnays and nobly run by all the goblins if you've ever encountered the robe of useful things in one of your campaigns you may be relieved to know when they manufactured the item the defects are still put to good use the robe of useless things brought to you by morgan sismansky in her homebrew piece 100 useless items is exactly what you would expect a patch filled robe that can magically conjure up useless items based on whatever patch is removed. As this is homebrew, you can customize these patches to your heart's content, and the author of 100 useless items has your back. They give a table of other item patches, some of which useless, that your robe can summon but some are awesome. Seriously though, being able to summon a 100 foot pole out of thin air seems pretty freaking awesome to me. Our next fabulous item is coming to us from 100 Magical Items and Where to Find Them, from Tubby. This fragrant powder can be mixed with a drink to imbue the consumer with plus two strength for 10 minutes, but there's a 25% chance the consumer will have troubling visions of some future event and suffer three levels of exhaustion after the 10 minutes have passed. This is a really neat homebrew document broken up into segments based on locations, but an even neater homebrew item. When an item can work its way into the plot line organically, it always feels rewarding to the player. So we're going to run that theory in reverse and make them extremely paranoid for no real reason. If you're DMing, don't let the user know the vision isn't real. Sell it. Prove your worth as a DM. A little bit of paranoia inside the player's head is going to make them analyze their actions a little harder. A great scenario to implement this would be for a party that needs extra strength in order to make it across some particularly difficult terrain. They start into a pot of tea for the team, everyone gulps up and then you roll, or have them roll their own fate. To decide which of the party members is going to become prophets of doom. You can tweak the severity of exhaustion based on a con saving throw for more variety possibly making one party member stand out as the chosen one, if multiple people roll. This is a really cool item that I believe will inspire some cool story moments for the party. So keep this one in your back pocket, but probably not, because having an unknown powder on your person when you're traveling, I mean, that's not gonna be a good time. A great resource for items is the Wild Beyond the Witchlight, an official Wizards of the Coast release. It gives us gems like the Dread Helm, a wonderful common item that enshrouds your face in darkness and makes your eyes glow red. Wizards of the Coast heard some people call D&D cringe, so they doubled down on it and put you in control. The whole item description is only one sentence. 
based. Because that description was a little lackluster, let's pull another one from beyond the Witchlight and draw our attention to the Sword of Steel. This sword is special. It's magical and has powerful utility. It has the ability to cast Revivify, score, and you and your party can rage on as bloodthirsty barbarians if it wants to help you out. So think twice before using it to butter your biscuits. Azrin, Steel is a lawful good character with stats and all, who can read and speak common and draconic. That's more than me. I can't read. Your perfect pal for your plan in D&D is to actually slay a dragon. I don't think that I've ever done that, to be honest. All right, everyone. I hope these items are of interest to you. There's so many awesome items in D&D, so it's easy to miss out on some awesome ones. Thanks for watching today's video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. And if you're feeling extra awesome, check out our Reddit, Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter all in the description. See you guys in the next video. Peace out. Keep on rolling. Woo! Arcane. Is this all in the fucking parentheses? Jesus. Boner. She has headphones. I can call her boner all I want. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, and I guess you're the one who's going to watch this after anyway. So you <laughs> like, God, I can't believe she did that. Look at her with the headphones. <laughs> Funny.